Hi, I'm Rick. Uh, you saw me the last couple of videos I did was actually was uh, trying to get some snow plowed this year. And uh, we actually had a very mild winter, and I was only, only able to get that one video in, actually two that I did back in early December when we had that 8-inch heavy snowstorm. Anyway, um, it's now early April here in northern New Jersey, and I got a feeling that the, uh, uh, the weatherman is probably going to be right. We shouldn't see any, any cold weather again for a while, at least where it's freezing and any snow. So the task at hand today is to get off the, uh, remove the 54-inch uh, snowblower, palletize it, store it for the summer, and get my front loader back on so I can get the, you know, my bucket back on, I get my forklifts back on, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Plus I've got a job at, a, at uh, my son's house to do, uh, to rake his backyard out. He just had a whole bunch of trees cleared. So I've also got to get this loaded on a trailer tomorrow and uh, get it over to, to his place. So um, let's start. I'm going to uh, walk through this as, as best I can. I know it's kind of reversed. I'd rather have one where I'm videoing it, where I'm installing it. But by taking it off this way, I'll show, you, I'll show you some key things to look for. And I got a couple of nice questions from the earlier videos, especially in regards to <clears throat> connection to the blower and an electrical connection has to be made on a speed sensor, a rotation sensor on the drive shaft to the blower that if not connected, when you go from forward to reverse, you'll get an engine cutoff. Um, the manual does a terrible job at explaining that or showing it or even mentioning it. Um, I found it by accident only because the dealer had installed the blower on my previous 1025R and when I removed it, there was this electrical connection and a, you know, three, it was a three wire plug that you know, just goes into each other. So I was aware of it when I, because this one I got shipped separately and installed it here uh, like last November, Thanksgiving or so. Alright, so let's get started and we'll, uh, we'll get this thing on. I'd like to hook up a battery tender to it while it sits here. Um, again, with the snow blower on it. I typically don't start this thing by maybe two or three weeks if it doesn't snow. So I always think it's a good idea to keep the uh, battery trender on it. Keeps the battery at, uh, you know, at peak uh, charge and ready to go when you need it. So it's just very simple to undo. Obviously, just take off the black and negative terminals. Take them out. Plug it. And uh, ready to go. Okay, so the first thing I got to do is um, I got to remove the hydraulic lines that control the chute direction. And then once we get the blower unit itself off, then we'll come back and take off the hydraulic that controls the up and down motion of the, uh, of the snowblower itself. Might be a little bit of oil here. Sometimes these aren't the tightest fittings, but it's still pretty quick and easy as I'll show you. First, you want to make sure you got the right ones disconnected. Let me just check the line checker. And now what I'm doing is to keep running the hydraulic lines back. I put the caps on them. So one, caps two, caps are on. And then just for storage purposes, I just wrap it on. Shoot. I'll later put twist ties on this so it doesn't unwrap. 
uh, after I get it onto the pallet. Right now, I'm going to get it just on the uh, on the dolly to move it around, make it easy. It might be a little tough to see. This is simply a, a, a slip locking collar that you pull off from the PTO shaft. But I'll do that right now to slip it in, and you can see it just pulls right back, and uh, it's basically detached. There's a little hanger here for it um, that will hang the this drive shaft in. Um, once we back the unit away, and this gets stored in this holder uh, when you're not using it. Okay, now that we got the hydraulic lines off, there's just two pins on each side that actually release the, uh, the blower itself from the lift. This is the one on the right side, and then this is the one on the left side. And it's got a little groove in there so it can lock it, keeps it open, keeps the pin away. So now the unit's free, now we just tilt the main piston, the main bracket, just tilt the piston, and this will fall away nicely and free the uh, blower completely. Okay, so now that we got the. Uh, Blower unit separated. We're going to take off the main lift hydraulic, uh, this bracket, and then there's this upper retaining bracket that holds onto the uh, hydraulic bracket. First, we're going to disconnect the hydraulic system, hydraulic leads from the distribution um, manifold. Uh, first, we're leaving pressure so to make sure there's nothing left inside the, that so we can pop these off. leave these right here in the tire uh, but again make sure you put the caps on get the dirt out of those nozzles okay first thing we're gonna do is we've got pins just like before move them over and lock them left and right side hold them up and then we can uh, from this point simple comes off as one unit and we'll put the just wrap the hydraulic lines here just temporarily we'll move this out of the way. now what we have is a lower bracket this is a PT test shaft holder coming from the PTO mid uh, mid location output from the tractor first thing we got to do is disconnect the PTO shaft and then we can um, lower this and take that whole assembly out. Okay, here comes uh, here comes one of the fun part of the jobs. Is uh, again the same sort of thing. Grab a hold of the shaft, got a locking collar, pull it back, and it will disengage. There you go. And you'll push it forward a little bit, and it comes off. So there you go. All right, now it's uh, it's ready to come out. And again, look at what I'll do now is take off the front bracket. Um, and I'll clean this up. I'll come back later and, and clean that up too and put a little bit of big grease on there for the summertime. Okay, so now what we have left is the lower, lower, control, lower support bracket. This holds the PTO shaft coming from the uh, uh, mid uh, PTO offtake drive from the uh, transmission. I leave the PTO shaft um, with this bracket as one unit initially, and then I'll separate the PTO shaft from this bracket and store separately. Reason for that is I like to keep the PTO shaft, especially with these swine fittings that are greased. I like to leave that here in the garage where it's dry and clean versus up in my shed, my barn, that uh, can get a little dusty and we don't need any dirt or debris in the spine shaft there because it would just mean a lot of extra work in the fall to clean that all up, make sure there's nothing in there greedy and re-grease it. Okay, this is where I told you in the beginning of a lot of questions I got in regards to Guys were sawing snow blowers and uh, going from forward to reverse, they were getting engine cut out. That's because of this sensor, which is under here, which connects by this uh, through wire connection that we just have to disconnect. And then we can remove this bracket, which takes out the whole PTO drive shaft. 
but this the sensor itself is attached to this lower this lower bracket. That's why we have to detach it electrically first. So with these, uh, with the 2025 has a front mounted toolbox. All we have to do is take the toolbox out. This reduces these, take out these clips. The toolbox comes out, put it over here. And now what we're gonna do to make it easy is I'm gonna actually remove the whole bracket so that it's easier to get my hands in there and it's also better that I can get a picture in there for you guys and show you exactly what we've got. Uh, and you'll see how simple it is, but if you don't do it, it works. Okay, this is the plug that you have to disconnect. Whoops, right there. Okay, just gonna break that apart. And then this lower bracket uh, can all come off. All right, so I'm gonna take that plug off and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so what I've done, I'm gonna shot this way, you can see it. I've taken the plug apart. This part stays with the tractor. I have a cover that I put on that. And then this, again, I'll cap stays with the uh, lower support rack. Okay, now that I've disconnected the, uh, the rotation sensor, speed sensor, whatever you want to call it, I've taken off the, uh, the simple clip ring here that holds, this, that holds this retaining bar. It really doesn't hold much weight, but you do want to hold on by the back. So it will drop down, and then you just lift it up. Lift it up there you go. It falls away. Um, this stays with the, uh, with this, right. slide this out. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I'll move the camera a little bit here for you. Okay, so what I'll do now is just I'm going to remove the whole assembly. I'll remove the PTO shaft from it, this uh, forward mount and bracket later, and then store this here, and this will go on the, on the uh, pallet that will have the other parts to it. So, it's just a matter of sliding this baby out. Okay, so now what I'll do is this is a cover plug for um, the cover for what goes on the uh, bracket itself. I'll reattach this. Um, I typically then, no actually I'm sorry, this is the one for here. I've got another one for there. But this is just a, a dummy cap that, they, that they've given me. So what I'm going to do is insert this here and then we'll put the bracket back in for the toolbox and reinstall the toolbox. Pretty much it uh, for getting the snowblower off. Now I just got to get it ready for the pallet. So as you can see, this bracket remains, but now it's clear, and you'll see later that I can put the loader back on, which gives me the use of my bucket and my forklifts, which I'll need the forklift, which I'll need to bring the pallets down to put the snowblower on a pallet, and I put the uh, upper and lower brackets on pallets too. Haul them up to the shed, and. That's about it. I think I'm going to, I'll, I will show you how I reconnect the, uh, the loader. Um, it's, it's again, real easy on these things. I'm sure you've seen it in other videos, but, uh, yeah, we'll just back this thing out of here and I'll, uh, I'll get this all ready to get on pallets.
Okay, this tends to be a little bit missing to come out. Uh, use a plastic plastic rubber head and handle, and just tap on the shaft and get it to move. And separate. Voila. Okay, this will go here. Can I palletize it later? And then uh, the drive shaft, which is here, front end, back end, I'll leave here in the garage.